afternoon everybody, my name is Marie Taylor, I'm the Reef Education Manager for Reef Magic Cruises and our presentation today is Reef Education Connections uh, to Sea Country Innovation of Co-Learning for a Sustainable Community. I'm going to be sharing the presentation today uh, with my colleagues at Irukandji Land and Sea Country Ranges and we're going to introduce Reef Magic's new addition to Sea Country, our Indigenous Rangers, right at the end, just for a short interlude. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit of an overview about the Reef Education programs. They were established in 2014, and the main reason for these programs to become established was to connect the local community to the Great Barrier Reef. We have eight research and education sites through the Marine Park Authority's permitting system, and it gives the local schools and national schools a real opportunity to go to the reef and learn on place. These programs uh, partake in classroom presentations, <coughs> options for different types of curriculum that lead to the Australian curriculum, give the students, the teachers and the extended school community an opportunity to work with the Indigenous traditional owners and uh, land and sea country rangers and more importantly showcasing the social, cultural, environmental and economic capital that the Great Barrier Reef brings directly to the local community. Okay, education partnerships. We partner with over 20 different schools within the local Cairns region and this provides an excellent networking opportunity for myself, the teachers and the students to look at how we can use the Great Barrier Reef as a learning resource and link that to the Australian curriculum through the biological science stream, the history, the geography, and even the numeracy and literacy streams, which many of the students are very excited about. So rather than learn about maths in the classroom, we can actually go and do projects on the Great Barrier Reef and collect data. And that also um, comes under the banner of STEM, which the federal government is pushing at the moment. So that's science, technology, engineering, and maths. One of the best things about the education programs and work, working with the local schools is the schools get to keep their data. So we're looking at coral reef health, we're looking at coral reef resilience, we're looking for diseases, marine debris, cots, and different types, of disease, uh, different types of things that might be happening on the reef. We can collate that data, and as the schools consecutively come year after year, they have a baseline and more importantly, they take ownership of that data and they take ownership of their patch of the reef. So for example, Redbridge State College go to Flynn Reef every single year. So they've been there in the heights when it was looking fantastic in 2015. They saw it in the lows of 2016 and 2017 during the coral bleaching event. And earlier this year, visiting that site again and seeing how the coral has shown resilience and is coming back to life. We also have many partnerships to make this work. So logistically taking groups of students out to offshore reef education can be quite challenging. So we do have a number of partners being through state government, local and federal government. Obviously, uh, we are partnered with different university groups as well, James Cook University and the University of Queensland, and we're able to use resources as well. And those resources in the form of the Ion Reef through the Marine Park Authority or Coral Watch through the University of Queensland give us something tangible that we can give the students when we enter the water, we can collect data, and the students are actively participating in citizen science. It gives them a snapshot of what it's like for us to manage our Great Barrier Reef, for them to take part and be a marine biologist for the day and to learn all different things. <coughs> Indigenous Ranger Partnerships. I've worked on the reef for over 15 years as a marine biologist from Lizard Island to Lady Elliot Island and in the Pacific as an educator. One part of the story was always missing for me. So when I initiated these programs in 2014, I wanted to introduce myself to the local Indigenous land and sea country rangers. 
I needed to understand their stories to present a more holistic picture, not just present the schools with the science, but connect the community to a fuller picture of the Great Barrier Reef, and that involves the culture through our Indigenous traditional owners. Learning on the Great Barrier Reef. Now, I can go into a school and talk about all different types of coral, all different types of scientific uh, programs, all different types of animals, but nothing beats personal experience. The majority of students that we work with have never even been down to the marina. Now, when they go to the marina area, not only are they seeing all those thousands of people, mainly, travel from all different parts of our world to come to our backyard. The next thing that they notice is the million dollar boat sitting in the marina and then all those people with the different layers of jobs from dive instructors to skippers to educators to biologists to reef engineers. We're showcasing this industry to our local area. Now, when we get the students out to the reef, there's nothing like the wind in their hair, never been, some of them have, haven't even been swimming in a beach before. They jump off that back platform into the beautiful clear water. Granted, sometimes it's a little bit rough and choppy and some of them are a bit seasick, but by the time we get them into the water, the reef speaks for herself. She'll show her the colours, the different types of fish, and each student will get a different experience from that. And we're hoping that it will be a memorable experience, and as they become more adults within this community, they're able to make smarter, sustainable choices. Okay, I'm going to hand you over to our rangers. Uh, g'day, my name is Tarkin. Um, I'm from the Arakanji Rangers. Um, uh, basically, we're traditional owners from Cairns to Port Douglas, along the uh, coastal strip. Um, as you can see on the map, um, <coughs> a majority of our sea country, uh, majority of our country is sea. Uh, we consist, consider ourselves a saltwater people, and our sea country covers basically from Michaelmas. Uh, K to uh, low arms. Okay, the Yerra Candy, oh sorry, hello, my name is Shane Singlin. <laughs> um, and the Yerra Candy story, uh, the Yerra Candy jellyfish was named after our tribe in the 1960s. Uh, it was discovered at Palm Cove. Uh, it was discovered by uh, Dr. Hugo Flacker. And the jellyfish has also become a symbol of our people. And um, we have a few uh, research sites around here in Cairns where we work with terrain and the council. It's just replanting mangroves and native plants along the Barren River catchment. Um, it's to reduce um, erosion and to, to promote better water quality for the area. And it's to help restore habitat for our natural uh, native flora and fauna. Uh, we also do see uh, sea country management such as um, Bird surveys, uh, uh, shark tagging research, uh, compliance with uh, Queensland Parks and Wildlife and Great Barrier Reef Marine Park uh, sorry, and uh, marine debris uh, cleanup. Um, as well as uh, we do a bit of, um, we help out with the uh, Grand Swans uh, starfish management uh, monitoring and also uh, participate in reef health surveys. Um, under the Ranger program, we also do cultural activities and community education. Uh, that means like dancing and school talks. Also attending conferences and cultural heritage um, monitoring. Um, we also talk with elders and community and culture, on our cultural values on the reef. Um, through our uh, partnership with Reef Magic, we also uh, have a few successes like uh, connecting people to country, um, building um, out in water capacity, um, working together out of sea country, promoting um, indigenous culture out in the reef, um, uh, professional role models for students, and um, our partnership with local schools and presenting creative and authentic ways to um, uh, deliver our message.
Okay, the Reef Magic Education success is number one, giving back to the community. As we all know, the Great Barrier Reef is desperately underutilised as a learning resource, especially for our local community. We also promote the partnerships between local schools, industry and tourism, which is very important. Providing traineeships and career pathways relevant to tourism, education and environmental management. So remember these kids may be seeing this industry for the very first time. And we're also showcasing sustainable communities. When we're down at the marina, many tourists will come up to us. We've got all the students in their school uniforms. We've got our indigenous rangers. We work with scientists and marine stakeholders. And the general community is very interested. Achievements to date, we have over 1,500 local students participating in this program. They love it every year. Isabella State School is a small primary school at the back of Edmonton area. We take the grade five students to Flynn Reef every single year. And when they graduate in grade six, they have to say what the best part of their journey through that school was. And most of the students say traveling out to Flynn Reef, which makes me very happy. We have over a thousand international students that have also heard about the programs and they're coming in to work with the marine biologists, the marine science and the traditional owners. Something that we'd like to share with everybody earlier this year, Reef Magic Cruises and Experience Co signed a memorandum of understanding with the Irukandji people and traditional owners. Now I think this is the first MOU between a tourism company and that uh, traditionally that is acknowledging the traditional ownership of the local indigenous people working in partnership and from that we have now started employing young indigenous education rangers and we have two of them here today so i would like to bring jeremy and malik up to the stage Reef Magic Cruises and Experience Co are looking to foster reconciliation by showcasing Indigenous history, opportunities to learn out at sea country, um, employment and sharing culture throughout all of our tourism operations. So these two young gentlemen are our trainees, they were very first trainees. We have a traditional owner from the Gulganji clan and also a traditional owner from the Irukandji clan. I'll let them introduce themselves and that will conclude our presentation. Thank you, Murray. Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jeremy Noble and I am also an, um, I'm an Indigenous Ranger in training. Sorry, I'm new to this. <laughs> um, what I do, uh, with my time in Reef Magic, I go into Reef Eds with uni students and school students. I go out and share the cultural side of uh, my country, which is Yarra and Fitzroy, Fitzroy Island. And uh, my goal um, by the end of my career with Reef Magic, God knows when, mm -hmm. is to empower someone who looks up to me um, to be a better role model and set the bar, show them that anything is possible, and if they set their mind to it, they can achieve whatever they want. And I'll bring Malik up as well. Thank you. Uh, thanks for that, Jeremy. Uh, my name is Malik Dade. I'm local Indigenous, Aboriginal, as you all know by now. So um, I'm one of the proud members of here in Kanji. Um, yeah, my main uh, role at, on the reef is to uh, teach the younger generation, so the school groups that come out, uh, more about our culture and also uh, about the marine life out there as well because about 85% of the tourism industry don't really know about the Aboriginals so it's good to share my culture with them. So my main, my main goal is to actually uh, become one of the professional role models to uh, the younger generations, also to my community and my family. And yeah, that's all I really get to say today, so thank you. Thank you.